Ring Knight saw the reigning champions prove they'll have a great chance at repeating. As much as us fans want to hype up other contenders like the Clippers and Celtics, among many others, who don't get me wrong, deserve their share of attention, ultimately the Warriors' mix of top-heavy talent and elite depth may end up being too much for a second straight year. After dominating LeBron James and Anthony Davis, here's an in-depth breakdown of why the Golden State Warriors are too much. Before continuing, just 11.3% of you watching this video are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference and takes just a few seconds. Lastly, I'll plug my Instagram where I post NBA edits you can't miss. Thank you so much for supporting my content. It should be impressive for any level of fan that Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, and Andre Iguodala have been on every one of the Warriors' four championship rosters. Stephen Clay's undescribable gravity-drawing marksmanship, Draymond Green's all-time great defense, plus overlooked screen setting and passing for a big man, and Andre Iguodala's leadership, I want Iguodala! Each have had their own unique impact, on the dubs now having the third most amount of championship rings among all 30 franchises, with seven. Two and a half years ago, Andrew Wiggins was added to that stacked talent, in a trade where Bob Myers also stole a future first round pick, which turned into Jonathan Kaminga. Since the Canadians moved to the Bay Area, Wiggins has completely rewritten the narrative about his career. We can never forget how the Minnesota Timberwolves organization had written off Wiggins as a bust. We can never forget the disrespectful takes from both the mainstream NBA media and the YouTube NBA media about Wiggins, but all that's over, now you can call him an NBA champion. The shot creating pressure relief which Andrew's given Stephen Curry, and also the clamps defensively that Wiggs provides, are the perfect fit for the Warriors' personnel and playing style. After Wiggins dropped 26 and 13 in Game 5 of the NBA Finals, fueling the dubs to a victory on an off night for Stephen Curry, Draymond put it best, something I thought I'd never say, when speaking on Andrew's Golden State turnaround. No one ever talks about organizations, it's always the player's fault. Every time a player doesn't pan out, it's always the player's fault. He's showing that it wasn't him. Those words from Green prove why Andrew Wiggins deserved every penny of his new four-year extension. Considering Wiggins got $21 million less than Jordan Poole, Maple Jordan evidently took a pay cut, proving he's all about winning. Don't get it twisted, Jordan deserved his bag as this slight drive into his jab step and Harden-esque step back over LeBron shows off Poole's Stephen Curry-esque shiftiness and balance which the Warriors paid him for. I made a separate upload on the most dangerous move in Poole's bag. After this, go watch that by clicking the top right. There's even more facts I didn't talk about in that video which prove Jordan earned his money. I'll talk about those in another video. Despite a shaky 4 of 15 opening, JP definitely had his moments on opening night. But getting back to Wiggins, and considering he was an all-star starter, who was responsible for holding in check insanely talented, potentially generational offensive talents like Luka Doncic in the conference finals and Jason Tatum in the finals with more than dependable but utterly top-notch perimeter defense, this man deserves his flowers. Stephen Curry had an all-time great finals performance, putting the team on his back offensively for essentially the whole series. But without Andrew Wiggins, the Warriors don't win the 2022 title, which the humble Steph is proud to admit himself. On the court, the best part about Curry is how he draws gravity and lets the game come to him, which helps generate a crisp offensive flow. Off the court, the best part about Curry, which shouldn't be taken for granted, is how he quite literally could care less about individual accolades. It's amazing that when Steph was drafted back in 2009, Monte Ellis said that he didn't want to play with Curry. I'm proud to share a hometown with Andrew Wiggins because he's helped enhance the legacy of my favorite player of all time outside of Kobe in Steph. With the Lakers making a late fourth quarter run in game one of 82, two-way Wiggs hit three massive triples to help seal W number one for the defending champs. The Kansas product has always had impressive poise to hit shots under pressure, and from an unbiased basketball fan's perspective, you can't help but be happy about Andrew's talent being put to good use. As Draymond said, an organization never gets any flack from fans when either a number one pick or even a high lottery pick doesn't pan out, but quite simply, the player development staff of the Warriors and that of the Timberwolves is night and day different. Not to mention, 
The Wolves didn't have three future first ballot Hall of Famers on their roster, but Wiggins has shown he more than fits in with this Warriors machine. He absolutely thrives in it. Andrew was the finals version of himself in the first of many against LA, and stuffed the stat sheet with 20 points, 6 boards, 4 dimes, plus a steal and a block each on 71.4% true shooting. Wiggins made 8 of 14 field goals, shot 4 of 7 from distance, and had a team's second best plus minus of plus 25. However, at plus 30, the number one ranked player in plus minus on opening night, you'd assume would be Steph, who also showed out with 33 points, 7 dimes, 6 boards, 4 steals, and a block, but it was actually a player I've dubbed multiple times in the past as the Warriors' unsung hero in Kevon Looney. Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett, a former DPOY and champion, had this to say about the under-talked about Kevon. Looney, yeah, Looney hard. Looney, Looney going to fall eight times, grab the rebound, guard AD, guard Djokovic, guard MB. And he playing 82. Both. He don't give a fuck. And he playing 82. He going to be out there moody about 25 years old, look like he's 72 years old <laughs> yeah. out there, motherfucker. And he playing 82. Many forget that Looney's just one of many draft steals for the Warriors, as the man could have been a lottery pick. Instead, Golden State robbed him with the number 30 pick back in 2015's draft. What almost no one takes into account with Kavan is that if he was drafted to another team with less depth at their big man spots, he could have developed a reputation as a top center in basketball. But like so many on the Warriors, Looney's incredibly humble and has accepted the position of being a star within his role in a championship system, as opposed to having a bigger role, potentially making an all-star team or two, as bold as that sounds, on a losing team. Looney had a vicious 22 rebounds in the Dubs' closeout Game 6 win against Memphis, the most boards in a playoff game by a Warrior since Larry Smith in 1987. To put Golden State up 2-0 in the conference finals, Looney contributed 21 points and 12 rebounds, the first 20-point, 10-rebound playoff performance by a Warrior since Robert Parrish in 1977. Capping it off, Loon was fundamental in securing the Warriors' spot on the biggest stage, as in Game 5 to close out the Dallas Mavericks in San Francisco, Looney pulled down a monster 18 rebounds. Speaking on how Looney helped get the Warriors through some tough times recently with his underrated leadership, Steve Kerr had this to say about Kavon, quote, He's the moral compass of our team. I'll ride with Loon forever. This is a special man. Very well put by Kerr because this man Looney has literally little to no ego. When we talk about sacrifice, if you think Andrew Wiggins made one, just look at Kavon. Looney's making nearly $100 million less than Wiggins, having signed a three-year $25.5 million deal this past July. Since Looney rarely gets any attention, what does Kavon do best outside of rebounding? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winner is Blake Bowser, who says everybody wanted BI to be KD 2.0, but I've been saying Ingram's game is very similar to Kobe in his number 24 era. Neither are freakish athletes, but use an array of moves and pump fakes to get to their spots and make contested shots look easy. Kobe might have a higher scoring average, but Ingram differs from Kobe in his playmaking. B.I. is one of the best passing forwards in the game, and I can't wait to see yet another leap in his game to becoming a perennial All-NBA player this year, Pell's 50-win season. By the way, I'm not biased. I've seen enough of this team. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.